And then there was 16 as Carolina punched its ticket to the Sweet 16 after beating Michigan State 85 to 69, keeping their record perfect against the Spartans in the postseason. Speaking of punched, North Carolina survived this one after taking a Mike Tyson-esque haymaker on the chin early, a credit to the resiliency of this UNC team to not flinch in a do-or-die type game. Down 12, backs against the wall. What changed? Carolina started to compete. Hubert Davis explained it best in his postgame, explaining that the Spartans' physicality will and want to, the first 10 minutes overwhelmed Carolina. In the post, they were catching the ball wherever they wanted to, close to the basket on the block for easy looks. On both ends of the court, Carolina was getting punked and pushed around. That's when Carolina came into the huddle and said, we can't even talk about any of the basketball stuff until we join the fight. I thought the moment that changed the game in terms of energy was Elliot Cadeau drawing a charge down six with 7-12 left in the first half where you could feel things starting to change. I also believe that Paxson Wojcik's insertion into the game sparked some life into the team highlighted by a great defensive possession where the team fought for the full shot clock, contested a deep tough shot attempt resulting in a long rebound and Wojcik running the break. On the drive, he found R.J. Davis in the corner for a three, forcing Michigan State to call a timeout. That timeout, though, didn't stop the run, however, as Harrison Ingram's three before the half had UNC on a 23-3 run over the last eight minutes, playing some of its most inspired basketball of the season. There was a cool moment I observed behind the bench where Armando Baycott was getting ready to go into the locker room for the halftime, and Hubert Davis was yelling to him that he made that happen because early on the bigs were catching it, like I mentioned, in the circle and going right over UNC's defenders. Baycott and Ingram specifically were the catalyst on defense for that run as they began to challenge Michigan State's bigs to catch it deeper and making it more uncomfortable for them to get those touches. Up nine at the break, the Spartans wouldn't just quit and a player I want to be sure to highlight for their performance tonight was Seth Trimble for what he brings as its six man. He had two monster blocks in the second half, and in a game in March where every possession is going to matter, those were huge and a reason why Carolina never even trailed in the second half. His athleticism is startling at times to watch with the way he elevates and elevates and elevates like he has springs attached to the bottom of his shoes. Then of course, having a guard like RJ Davis to close out a game is what March is all about with a game high 20 points and who best demonstrates this team's no flinch mentality. On to Los Angeles as Carolina completes its largest comeback in a tournament game since trailing USC by 16 in 2007 with either Grand Canyon or Alabama up next. Until then on the West Coast, I'm Taylor Vipolis from the Spectrum Center in Charlotte signing off for Inside Carolina.